What's going on guys? JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. Today we're going to be doing the match review, match reaction and match analysis of the Premier League game between Burnley and Manchester City at Turf Moor, which Manchester City have won by two goals to nil. But before I crack on with this video, make sure like always if you are enjoying the content, you want to help to support my channel and do subscribe. Aiming for 25k subscribers, we're less than 400 subs away from 23,000 subscribers, so any help towards that would be much appreciated. Social media links are in the description below and sliding across at the bottom of the screen if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter and Instagram. My email also in the description below too. If you want to hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business inquiries, leave a thumbs up as well if you do enjoy this video and like goal 100 likes once more. And also don't forget to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let's crack on though with this match review. We're going to start off first by speaking about the lineups and then Manchester City's first half performance which I thought was very good. So the big calls, John Stones picks up a little knock uh, before returning back to Manchester City on international duty. He will be starting in midweek against Atletico Madrid. He's probably going to be starting uh, against Liverpool next weekend and he's probably going to be starting against uh, Atletico Madrid again uh, the midweek after. So that's three games inside seven, eight days. So Manchester City have uh, making the, or taken the decision there uh, to ensure that John Stones doesn't have uh, any problems when it comes to uh, any niggles with John Stones and instead gone with having two fully fit senior first team centre-backs with Emerick Laporte and Nathan Ake, which I did speak about in my preview so City going with that doesn't surprise me and Ake being good in the air that call I thought was the correct one. Uh, now next big call Gundogan comes into the team uh, Bernardo Silva onto the bench. Bernardo Silva uh, with his style of play and how he likes to play uh, in my opinion will be very pivotal to Manchester City when it comes to playing against Liverpool. He likes playing against Liverpool and to me you've got to pick and choose which players suit which game. To me Bernardo Silva must play in the two games we've got against Liverpool so I can understand him having a rest here because he could well be utilised against Adelaide Atletico Madrid uh, as well and uh, when it comes to a, a free man midfield from Manchester City, Rodri, uh, De Bruyne and Gundogan, it isn't my favourite midfield free but it did work in what we wanted from this game which was Manchester City to switch the play, moving it from the centre to the left to the right uh, and Gundogan uh, getting into the space when pullbacks are coming in that's what uh, both Gundogan and De Bruyne particularly in the first half did so well and that's why we scored the, them a couple of goals so that was uh, key and very important there uh, for Manchester City and we could have had a third in the uh, second half as well with uh, the pullback uh, with uh, Gundogan having a shot which was uh, straight into the keeper uh, to uh, to make the save and, and really City could really have had three or four really if they wanted to to have been clinical uh, in that second half uh, and then the other big call was Riyad Mahrez who wasn't used at all in this game uh, Riyad Mahrez uh, not being used we went with an all English uh, attacking trio with Raheem Sterling on the right hand side and I will add I think I prefer Raheem Sterling on the right hand side to the left hand side Grealish on the uh, went on the left wing for Manchester City in this game and up top was Phil Foden which like I said being clinical for Foden could have had a goal, uh, blazed it over the crossbar, uh, Jesus when he came on could have had a goal or two as well, so definitely room for improvement here for, for Manchester City, but uh, in the grand scheme of things a very good result. Now, the first half from Manchester City, so, so good. Burnley are a team that are going to sit deep so when we just come back after the international break in the first five minutes I didn't think City were very good uh, we weren't creating anything we weren't doing anything uh, Burnley looked like they were up for the game and I was just wondering, I was thinking to myself just before Manchester City scored how are we going to get around the space what are we going to do are we going to settle into this game because we've just had two weeks off we've not played Premier League football for nearly three weeks so how are we going to respond? How are we going to get ourselves uh, developed and settled into this game so we can push on uh, and and win this game? Because uh, was under pressure. Liverpool won in the early kickoff, two 0 against Watford at Anfield. So Manchester City were under pressure in this game, and then first opportunity that we create, put it into the back of the net. Clinical Kevin De Bruyne, an assist for Raheem Sterling on the right hand side uh, and that's just what well, the doctor ordered really um, the one thing you'd want from this game would be a goal in the first phase of the game the first 10 minutes and that's exactly what Manchester City do and I think that going forward against Atletico Madrid against Liverpool in these big games that we've got coming up in our next four games I think that's crucial push early on get them early goals get them early goals put your oppos uh, opposition under pressure good practice here in this game we need to be doing the same going forward against Atletico and Liverpool. And no disrespect 
uh, when I say this against Burnley, but Atletico Madrid and Liverpool, they're completely different ball games. They've got the quality to hurt Manchester City. They know what they do. They do it very well. And Manchester City must play a perfect game if we want to go through to the Champions League semi-final uh, and knock out Atletico Madrid. If we want to win the Premier League, we want to beat Liverpool next weekend, we must have a perfect game. If we want to get through to the FA Cup final and knock Liverpool out at Wembley in the semi-final, we must have a perfect game. Uh, and that's what we need to be striving for. But this, great preparation. No better preparation for Atletico on Tuesday night than winning this game. We sit top of the Premier League. We don't have to think about the Premier League now until next Sunday in that big game against Liverpool. All focus has to be a game at a time and it has to be on our focus at the Etihad against Atletico Madrid. To me, because we're the home team going first, it's so, so important we get a good result. And to me, being at home, the only thing that's good is a win, so we must win against Atletico on Tuesday. We've acted under pressure here, we're under pressure on Tuesday. It's a big moment, and City were clinical. Just against uh, in the second half, uh, just before the 30th minute, when Gundogan got the uh, second goal for Manchester City, uh, that was our third shot uh, on target in the first half, and Gundogan tucked it away, albeit via a deflection, but the all count, and getting yourselves into them positions, the build-up play, and the cutbacks, they're what's so important to Manchester City's game. And Raheem Sterling did it very well. He was looking up. He was looking for where the players were and putting the balls into the channels. Now, Burnley were dropping deeper and deeper to defend their goal and weren't actually looking for the space. There wasn't too much zonal marking going on, uh, which is what was, uh, to me, allowing Manchester City to find them spaces. They were a little bit tighter in the uh, in the second half, so it was forcing Manchester City to be going for shots more on the left and on the right and more spectacular efforts, which Manchester City weren't on and weren't getting correct on another day we are capable of putting them chances away and we could have had four or five uh, and albeit considering we're tuning up after 30 minutes we could have been looking towards trying to get more goals to try and work on that goal difference because Liverpool do have a superior goal difference to us but I wouldn't worry too much about it I wouldn't start thinking too much about it what's important right now is taking things a game at a time and keeping our strongest 11 as fit as possible and our team selection and the victory and the three points that we've got here has ticked all them boxes so this to me is a perfect result for Manchester City and great prep for Atletico great prep for Liverpool as well we do need to be better of course these are fantastic football teams we're going against but we're in the business part now of the season and Pep Guardiola said is uh, is he nervous is, is he is he fear, is he fearing these games not fearing them he's enjoying them he's looking forward to them because these are where the real tests are. And our season in the next two weeks is going to be defined against our result. Uh, uh, it's going to be defined in these next two weeks and the results that we get in the, our next four games. Atletico at home, Liverpool at home, Atletico Madrid away from home, Liverpool at Wembley in the Cup semi final. Massive, massive games. If City can come out with four wins, we're on course to potentially win a treble lose some of these games or lose all of these games and then Manchester City won't be winning the Champions League. We're having to chase Liverpool and it's out of our hands for the Premier League and we're out of the FA Cup as well. So this season will be defined on the next four games in the next couple of weeks. Good preparation. We're now at that point now uh, where things are going to be decided. But the one most important thing about today's result that we've had is we are on top of the Premier League and it means next weekend against Liverpool. And this, is, to me, is so important. We don't need to win that game. We need to make sure we don't lose that game. And to me, if Liverpool want to win the Premier League, they have to come to our backyard and they have to beat us. That's easier said than done. I cannot wait for these games. I'm so excited. We're going to have to build up to all these big games coming up over the next few days and into the next week. So you've got that to look forward to. So if you haven't already, do make sure you have subscribed. Press that bell. Put your push notifications on. Be notified immediately for when I do upload. 25k subscribers is the overall aim. Less than 400 subs now away from 23,000 subscribers. So any help towards that would be much appreciated. Also, don't forget as well, social media links. They're in the description below and sliding across at the bottom of the screen. If you want to go and follow me on my Twitter and Instagram. My email also in the description below too. If you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries, leave a thumbs up if you did enjoy this video. 100 likes once more is the like goal and lastly most importantly let me know your thoughts in the comments below of what you made of this performance from Manchester City it's three points 
Raheem Sterling with a couple assists, my JSGC man of the match. There's room for improvement, but it's the ideal result. And now we've got these big games to look forward to where our season is going to be defied. Bring it on. I've been JSGC. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope everyone is safe and well. Peace. Ciao for now.